I'm here with uh, Team Tilted Kilt, Production 3. Guys, you've got one of the, the teams that, that people love to come see because uh, sometimes you bring those lovely Tilted Kilt girls around and you guys are all about racing, but you're also all about having fun. Yes, sir, we sure are. The Tilted Kilt people have been really good to us. Uh, we actually have a lot of fun when we get to bring the girls around. So um, <clears throat> it's been a good time. They've been a great sponsor to us and uh, look forward to having a ride with them next year as well. Now tell us a little bit of uh, background how Tony Canale got started in offshore racing because this is a very, very unique sport. Um, I guess about five years ago, I had the opportunity to work on the crazy chicken boat and uh, D. Early gave me the opportunity to throttle for him and that's how I got started in it. Uh, and I guess about three years ago, uh, D and I parted ways. He had some other things he wanted to explore. So I bought a boat, uh, the Tilted Kilt became the sponsor and I asked Richie to drive for me. Uh, now, Rich, you've been around the block in offshore racing uh, several times yourself. You've been in several boats. How'd you come to, to be with Tilted Kilt? Well, Stan, it, it goes back to 2004. A friend of mine asked me if uh, we wanted to go racing one year and uh, he bought a boat and a transaction and we ended up in Miami, and uh, the first race was there, and coming out of government cut was a real gut check for me to see if I really wanted to uh, get involved in this sport. And uh, after that, I've been uh, I've been around in a couple different teams. Uh, this last team with uh, Tony Canelli and uh, Tilted Kilt is, seems to be a good fit for me. Uh, our main goal is to win a national championship and a world championship. We've been at it for uh, two years now. We've had a couple of bad lucks in Key West. So this year we uh, we got all the bugs worked out of the boat and uh, we're looking real good for uh, Key West and actually Clearwater. So it's just one of those things. It's a crazy sport that, you know, unfortunately we love to death and it's just one of those things, Stan. <laughs> it's one of those things. We are up here in the Big Apple, New York City. This is a, the 22nd annual Superboat New York Grand Prix. It's always great because they shut down the Hudson River. Very, very unique venue for offshore racing. It's really inshore, but I tell you, the Hudson River can get rough. Yeah, um, I've raced it the last three years and been fortunate enough to win it the last three years. So um, it's always a fun race. It's a neat place to be. Um, the Hudson is different every time we come. We never know what we're going to find. It can be just like a washing machine out there because the water bounces off the New York side and the New Jersey side and builds up rich as the race progresses. Yeah, it's actually a tricky river. Uh, I've raced here four or five times and uh, like Tony said, every year you get something different. Uh, you never know what's going to come down that river, especially in a, in a, a rainy day before the race. So it, it can be tricky. I spun out uh, one year in Thank God we didn't go over, but it was definitely a gut check, you know, to, to realize the when the water meets the other water coming in, and the current is really, really, really strong in that river. So it, it's it's tricky, man. It's it's dangerous, but on the other side, it, it's fun, and you really have to stay on your game and pay attention for sure. Tony, in all uh, motorsports, you, you have to have what they call dial in your, your vehicle, whether it's a motorcycle, a car, or a boat. Boating, uh, perhaps one of the toughest things to do to get that boat dialed in, the center of gravity, the power, propulsion stuff. You guys have made a lot of changes to your fountain. Briefly give us an, an overview of what all you've done with this boat, because you've made some big changes. We started out with a set of Bravos. Rich and I realized that the Bravos wasn't strong enough to stand up to him and I. We tried to drive the boat down in the corner and we'd just break the transom assemblies and the drives on it. So <clears throat> we had the opportunity to run a, number set, a set of number sixes. We did that and realized that no matter what we did to the boat, we couldn't balance it. It was so hard to get the boat balanced. We added weight, we took weight out, we moved the motors around, couldn't do it. And uh, we went to Rick Wimp at Arneson and uh, told us that the Arnesons were indestructible. We couldn't tear one of them up. So we put those on there, uh, rebalanced the boat and weighted it. It took a couple of tries and we finally got the boat. It just drives like a dream. Um, we really haven't been able to tear it up. We've had a couple of bugs here and there, but the Arneson drives and Rick Wimp and his staff have been awesome to us. Uh, great guys, great product. Um, 
We the boat is so much fun to drive. It's not even fun now. Two years of working on it with this setup and finally getting the right props and getting everything the weight right. The boat is just a blast to drive. It's 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 fun. Um, so we've enjoyed that. It's taken I guess about three years total from the time we started to now to to get the boat to run like it does. So real happy with it and there's not a whole lot we do to it now we come to the race put fuel in it change the weight a little bit and race it a lot of fun as we stand here and talk a, a weather front is moving in you see the clouds of the wind is picking up it's going to be very very interesting on sunday here in new york for the 22nd annual superboat new york grand prix these guys looking for their third checkered flag in a row on the hudson river this is team tilted kilt production three guys thanks for the insight Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate everything uh, Superboat does for us and the Tilted Guild. Thank you.